Former Jacksonville Jaguar player Donovan Darius. She is now an author of a great book called Next Level Motivation Principles for Living Well. And he has a few words to share with you guys. Let's give him a hand. My name is Donovan Darius. A little bit about me, guys. I grew up in Kansas, New Jersey. I was one of five kids. My mom had five kids by the age of 23. My mom did everything she could. We grew up in some in the toughest part of the city. When I walked out of my house on one corner with gangs, one other corner with drug dealers, every single day. I come home, I home come home, check the light switch to see if we have electricity. Our car didn't always work. We were on food stamps, government system, government cheese, you name it. Didn't have school clothes all the time. I say all those things, you guys, because like a lot of you guys here, Camden, where I grew up, was a lot worse than Jacksonville. And so that meant that every day, every single day, when I walked outside, I either saw something that was not productive, I, I knew people who weren't productive, but yet I still had a dream. I still had something I wanted to do. How many guys in here got something you want to do, something you want to be, or a dream that you want to accomplish you guys when you guys grow up? All right, awesome. And so here's the thing, for me, that dream for me was I wanted to help my mom. My mom used to be sick all the time. She used to be in and out of hospitals all the time. And I knew it was one time, man, when I went, to, I was nine years old. I was nine years old, we went to church one Sunday. And it was something about that Sunday that at the church, someone said, you know what, Donovan, go to the pastor and ask him to pray for you. Because I wanted to help my mom. I wanted to help my family. I wanted to do something different than what was going on now. And so I did, I went to the pastor at the end of the church. And I said, you know what, Mr. Jackson, can you pray for me? I said, because when I grow older, I want to help my mom. And so I thought he was just going to pray for just me. But he stopped everybody in the church and said, you know what, we're going to pray for God. And he prayed for him. At that moment, nothing happened. I didn't feel like the sky opened up. I didn't hear no thunder roar. No, I didn't hear any voices. But after that moment, I believe after that moment, my life totally changed. And I say that because after that moment, the decisions I started to make, the people I started to meet, the things that started happening to me, they happened to me not because I wanted to grow up and get famous and get rich and have money and have a house. Sure, those things happened. But the reason why I wanted to be in the NFL, the reason why I wanted to live my dream was so I can help somebody else. How many of you guys got somebody that's done so much for you that you want to be able to do something for them when you grow up? How many of you got? Because one of the keys of you attaining success is you being able to dedicate your life to something and somebody bigger than yourself. I was forced to play 10 years in the league, but when I was in college, my third year in college, I came home from practice one day and I saw the message ringing on my phone and I picked it up and it was my mom. And it was something about her voice that day that was different than any other voice. Like one, any other day. One that day, I heard her voice. It was trembling, she was scared, I heard panic, I heard fear, I heard stress. And I'm like, Mom, what's going on? She said, Don, your two brothers, Antoine and Chris, was at school. And while they was at track practice, somebody came in the gym and pulled out a gun on them. And said, if they don't do this, that, and the other, that they was gonna shoot them right on the spot. And so my mom called her. I'm in college. She called me, and I'm like, man, I'm hearing it in her voice. Remember, I'm only a college student, but it was something on the inside of me that said, and before I even realized it, I said, Mom, put him on the bus and send him to me. And so that was a Thursday, that Friday, she put him on the bus, sent him to me while I was in college. So not only when I was in college was I a student, not only was I an athlete, but I became their father, their brother, their friend. When you live a life of dedication, for something greater than yourself, dreams happen. So I went and talked to the football staff and the academics. I said, you know what? There's nothing else for my family to do. I'm the only hope my brother's got. I need your help. So what they did, I was on scholarship. The money that they was giving me to stay in a dorm, they gave me that money to get home, you know what I mean, to get an apartment. The money they was giving me for food, they was able to give me money so I could buy groceries. 
I went down to the social service office, I got food stamps to help my brother. I went down to the welfare office, I got furniture. I did all those things because why? I was living a life of dedication. When I look at my friends that I grew up with, it was guys much talented, much more better than me. But because they was living life for themselves, because they were doing things for themselves, because it was all about them, that's where it stopped. So if you decide to live a life just for you, it's not going to go up so high. But if you live a life of dedication, and you set your goals around how you want to accomplish it, because it's your purpose, it's your why, it's your dream, it's your dedication, that's going to give you the strength when you don't feel like doing it anymore. I didn't feel like being a father in college. I didn't feel like being the brother and a friend and a student. I didn't feel like it all the time. There was no day, every day I didn't feel like doing it. But there was no day I ever felt like losing and losing my brother. So my why was the reason why I did what I did. Your why is going to be the reason why you do what you do. My senior year, my junior year coming out of college, they said, Donovan, you can go pro right now. You can forget your first, your last season and you come into the NFL right now. If you come out, you'll be a try. Third round, fourth round, fifth draft pick. I thought about it. I called up a couple NFL coaches. I said, you know what, I'm thinking about coming out. Because I'm thinking to myself, this may be the only way that I can take care of my family. But they said, you know what, Don? We think that you're a good player, but we think that one more year won't hurt you. And so I thought about it. And I said, you know what was most important to me? That if I go to the NFL right now, my brothers may not graduate. They got one more year. They may not graduate. And so I said, you know what? I'm not going to go to the NFL. I'm going to come back one more year. I'm going to finish my degree. I'm going to make sure that my brothers dedicate my life. My brothers graduate. Because this may be the only chance they've got. Who are you living your life for? Who are you sacrificing for? When you don't feel like doing your work, when you, feel, when, you, when you don't feel like making the right decision, with all the pressure around you, who are you thinking about that's helping you make the right decision? It can't just be you. It gotta be something and somebody greater. Because that's what's gonna pull you. And so the story goes, man, that senior year I came back, and I tell you, man, you guys hear that law that says whatever you reap, you know, you reap what you sow. Since I sold into the life of other people that next year, I had the best year of my life in college. I led, the, I led college in interception. I led college in tackle. I went first round pick, 25, 25th pick overall. I came here, Jaguar gave me six million. Then when I was playing, one year they gave me another three million. Another year they gave me four million. Another year they gave me five million. Why? Because I was living my life not just for me. So what do I do now? I played 10 years. I run my foundation where I work with you, teenagers and families, on personal leadership and life skills. Why? My life is for here. I work with the NFL as a life coach, work with guys coming into the league, and when they leave the league, helping them with their mindset, helping them focus, helping them understand that yes, we all go through stuff, okay? We can all have a past, but we don't have to be a prisoner of our past, and helping them walk forward. And then I also get a chance to work with youth kids, on a sports team. And so again, I'll leave you guys with this. Next year is your last year in high school. You'll never have that year to live over again. You'll never do it again. Two things in life you'll never get back. Your time and your words. Measure them wisely. Invest them wisely. If you spend your time looking at if you spend your time looking at TV or listening to something else versus getting better, you'll never get it back. You'll never get it back. I can't motivate you. I can inspire you. That means I can put something in you through here or through here and only you. It's up to you to do the work. What I'm sharing to you is exactly what I share to them. You are my son. You are my daughter. And that's just me. I'm going to share with you and give you any and everything I can to help you live the life to your potential. But only you, but only you can do it.